and welcome to Vinyl Obsession, the mobile edition. You may notice I'm in a different room. Today is Christmas Day 2021, and I flew home to Massachusetts to visit with my family. So here we are. I guess it's also the home edition, truly home edition. Well, without further ado, let's get right into it. Today, I'm not only going to talk about some vinyl records, but I'm going to talk about other nostalgic items from the late 70s and 80s that I found around my house and that have really become treasure for me. Things my mom held on to and that I held on to that I'm going to be taking back with me to Florida. And they're just really cool. But first, let's talk about vinyl. So today's Christmas Day and my mom got me a new record and I'm so happy it was on my list of things that I wanted for Christmas and I'm about to show it to you. Sati, Eric Sati, who writes just amazing piano pieces. Um, I never knew about him until my mom actually sent me an article. She sends like clips things out of the newspaper about him. I looked him up and I fell in love with his music. So um, I got this record, which I really wanted. And I can't wait to when I get back to Florida to play it. Uh, it's just, it just moves me. And I'm absolutely ecstatic that my mom got this for me. And then yesterday... I was hanging around the house and I wanted to get out. So I took a lift to a store called Newberry Comics, which is a, a store up here, up here in Massachusetts. Um, they've been around for a long time. When I was younger, I used to go there to buy, um, well, comic books. But also they, I, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I used to, at one point, I dyed my hair. I shaved it all really short and then I dyed it blonde. Don't laugh at me. It was right when Eminem came out with his first album, you know, um, Chicka Chicka and Slim Shady, and he had that blonde hair. And I don't know what I I don't know what I was going through, but that's where you would get your hair dye and your hair bleach was Newberry Comics. It was just the place. So I used to go there all the time. I had a chain wallet that I got from there. Oh, you could buy Doc Martin boots there. It was just a place where all the kids got their cool stuff. So it's always been kind of like an edgy store. And I'm really happy that it's still around, that it survived the digital age. And now that vinyl's back, they have a huge vinyl section. So... I ended up at the mall, which I wasn't planning on going to the mall, but they had moved locations. And so we ended up at the mall and I saved the bag because it always says their motto is for a wicked good time. And the word wicked it, um, in Massachusetts, it means like awesome. So when you say something's good, you don't say it's good or great. You say it's wicked good. It's wicked awesome. So that's kind of a take on that. Um, and this is the record I got at Newberry Comics. It's by a, a kid, he goes by the name Cave Town, and this is his album Lemon Boy. And I heard about this kid, um, I don't know how I, you know, you listen to some music and then it suggests others. Somehow I came across him, fell in love with his music, and um, apparently it's really hard to get a hold. I had seen this album on FYE, and I could have bought it, and I didn't. And I went back the next day and it was gone. It was sold out. And um, his fans are really like hardcore fans. So I'm really happy I was able. They had one copy at Newberry Comics. And this is um, this is the 11th vinyl pressing. And it's limited to 1,000 units. So I guess they've been putting out different pressings um, of so many units. So this is the 11th run and it's one of a thousand. I really didn't buy it for its collectability or to like wait for it to go up in value. I just really like the music. Of course, if it did go up in value to like a ridiculous amount, I'd think about selling it because I just get a new one that wasn't as expensive. But for now, it's something to listen to. I'm not going to like keep it in the wrap or anything. So next I have plans to go um, record shopping with my brothers later in the week up in their neck of the woods. And since I'm up north, I think as far as used records, I'll find a whole different variety of types of music because you know music is regional so things that were popular in florida back in the day are different than things that were popular up north and in massachusetts back in the day so i think i might be able to find some different kinds of music 
and just really i'm really excited to hit up the antique stores and and record stores here up north since i've gotten into vinyl i've also surprised myself by becoming interested in cassette and when i first heard people talking about a cassette resurgence and it got me thinking but cassettes were horrible i mean i remember my first cassette as a kid was i opened it up on christmas day so it was like maybe 40 years ago to the day um and it was the pointer sisters and i remember i had asked for a new edition but I got the Pointer Sisters, and I'm not going to lie, I was disappointed at first. <laughs> Get it? Appointed Pointer Sisters? <laughs> um, but I started listening to the tape, and I fell in love with it. So I was really happy with that. And then I think for my birthday, I might have gotten a new edition finally. So I had two cassette tapes to my name. And... You know, back in the day, you didn't get a lot of stuff as a kid. You had to wait for Christmas or your birthday. So this was a big deal to have these two cassettes that were mine. And I think my, I also had been like, I had a hand-me-down tape recorder and that I would play them on. And um, I wore those tapes out. I mean, they sounded horrible. By the time I got through with them, they were like, so I didn't have the, like the best thoughts about tapes. Um, cause then CDs came along and I was like, forget this, I'm going to do all CDs. But I've been watching videos about how tapes can sound really good if you have a good player and good tapes. But most of all, I started thinking about the nostalgia of tapes also. How I used to make mixtapes and I used to put a blank tape in the radio and wait for, on Sundays, um, they would do the top 40 countdown, Casey Kasem. And so I knew they were going to play my favorite songs and I would record that and make like a mix tape off of the radio. That's how you got your songs on demand as a kid. That was on demand. That was your streaming. You made your own mixtapes. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about how fun that was. And I also am interested in making my own cassette tapes of my music and recording directly to cassette. So I'm going to look into a Tascam Porta studio that records to tape. I have my eye on one and um, I'll be able to plug my instruments right into it and mix on the board and record analog directly to tape. And it has four tracks so I can do guitars and then do vocals, you know, keep it simple. And that's something I can sell at my merch table when I do my live shows because I'm doing a live show this coming April in Tallahassee at the Word of South Festival. And it's a, it's a pretty big deal and I get to have my own merch table. I wanna have something people can take home. And I think me making a handmade mixtape of my music would be just the thing. So I'm excited to get that going. I was telling my mom all about my interest in cassettes and vinyl and she loves to talk about it because those are things she has memories of too. So it's something we can share together. And she said, you know what? go in my bookshelf on this cabinet on this side of the bookshelf and tell me what you find. So I went in her room and I came out with this. A Radio Shack tape player. They don't make these anymore. Radio Shack is closed. I don't believe they manufacture any products anymore. So this is really special to have. She told me she bought it a while back. She's not quite sure why she was gonna record things. She like used it once and so now it's mine. And she had a couple blank tapes, which is great. And they're 60 minutes because the 90 minutes and 120 minutes, the longer a tape gets, the more terrible it sounds. So 60 minutes is a good, um, a good tape. So then I'm, okay. I've got cassettes, I've got vinyl, and then I started looking through my cabinets here at home just for, I know I had stashed away some cool things from my youth, and I came across this. I've seen it a million times when I come home, but it never struck me as something cool till now. This is my library of CDs. So I started collecting CDs um, probably in the 90s, my own CDs. And, I mean, it's just bringing me back to bands I had forgotten all about. Like, Guster, Hoobastank, Eve Six, Counting Crows, Bush. Um, and then it has, like, my Blue October collection, which really got me through some hard times. Um, and then I thought this was interesting. I didn't notice this back in the day till I started record collecting. But the Columbia Six Eye record is... a cool record when you get a six eye record it's like a pretty cool deal on vinyl and columbia actually made a six eye cd 
This is John Mayer, um, Heavier Things. So I think that's really cool. Only problem is most of these CDs have my name written across them because the place where I used to live required that our name be on all our stuff. So I don't think people would like to have that if I sold them. But I'm not interested in selling these. They're actually like a library of my youth. They bring me back to a different time. They remind me where I've been and how far I've come. Um, just the different music. And I kind of can remember like everywhere I was when I was listening to these CDs. So they really mean a lot to me. And I'm going to bring those back to Florida as well. But I didn't have anything to play them on. And I found in my mom's, she still has a bunch of CDs. And in her drawer... I found this baby. It's a Magnavox. It's a, um, this was made in 2004, but, um, so it's not like old, old, but it is still of the, of the, you know, when they were actually making CD players. And this is really nice. It's metal. It has some, these Iowa headphones. You remember these little, little guys that they don't sound the greatest, but they are nice and light. And so I'll probably use them. And, but mostly I'm going to, also, with my cassette player, I can line it out to my good speakers and listen like that. But if I wanted to listen on headphones or take it somewhere, I could. So we put batteries in this, and it works great. The tape player I haven't tested out yet because I don't have any tapes. But um, it seems to be in great condition. So very exciting things. Very exciting things. Now I have two things that are not music related, but are really, really cool to look at. Da -da 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 -da. Who remembers the Smurfs? I used to collect these babies. I remember I was in about fourth grade. Even the smell brings me back. It's that vinyl plastic smell that was probably like highly toxic back in the 80s. And um, I don't have many of them. I knew kids that had like boxes of these. This was Jail Smurf, and I don't have his jail cell anymore, but he, his hands were holding on. And I, my favorite was Art was Art Smurf, because I liked art, and he's painting. And um, so that's really neat. I looked them up. They're not, like, worth a lot of money, but they're worth a lot to me in memories, and that's cool. I'm going to bring them home and set them up, maybe make a nostalgia table or something with all my items. And then there's one thing in there that isn't a Smurf, and that's a Weeble. Do you remember Weebles? Um, their motto on the commercial is they Weeble and they Wobble, but they don't fall down. Because they were toys, dolls that actually didn't fall over, so you could set them up and they would stay upright. And they came with a treehouse, and I remember the treehouse had a little swing, and you'd put the Weeble in the swing, and you'd roll it, and it would go up into the tree hours of entertainment let me tell you hours i can place myself in my house where i grew up playing playing with this tree house so i'm just really excited to have this stuff and last but not least probably one of my coolest nostalgic items is this tommy tronic pac-man portable pac-man when i got this thing for my birthday i thought my parents must have paid a million dollars for this i mean it's a portable game. All we had was Atari at the time, which you had to plug into your TV and plug into the wall. We didn't have Game Boys or any of that. This was futuristic. <laughs> and it's a very simple form of Pac-Man. It's like the screen, I don't have the batteries. It needs to see batteries, but the screen is already there. And like all the places the Pac-Man can go, you can kind of see. And then the button simply changed the lights. And, um... So it's Pac-Man with the ghost, and it makes this, my family hated the, the sounds it made. It was like, tick, 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 and they would kick me out of the room all the time for playing with this. And I was like, what's wrong? I love this. The sound didn't bother me. It was music to my ears. This was dear to me. I took it everywhere when we went on vacation. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, and I still have it. And I looked this up, too. They're They're not, like um were exceptionally rare or, or valuable but very valuable to me i'm definitely going to get some c batteries and uh just make this thing work i think i made a video a few years ago and this was in it but probably most of my viewers haven't seen that so i wanted to show it again 
<laughs> it's really cool. Vintage. Cool, man. Okay, so that's all the, all the cool stuff I have to show you from my house and from my childhood. Um, yeah, so uh, this, this was Vinyl Obsession with a twist. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. And stay tuned for more episodes of the Vinyl Obsession where we talk about my love of vinyl, my journey with collecting, and other retro things that I might come across with time. Cassettes, um, CDs are kind of retro now too. Games, whatever. We'll show it. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Okay.